welcome along. My name is Jess Izzat and I've got to say a huge happy new year from all of us at Shorts on Tap. On the way for you, I have got a whole lineup of incredible short movies this evening. Year Zero also marks Shorts on Tap's seventh birthday. So one more reason to pop open the bubbly and celebrate with us, even if it is in our very comfy loungewear. We are casting our minds away from this tragic, nonsensical year with a big fat laugh in the face of adversity and COVID-19. Lined up for you, we have a whole bunch of incredible and super funny short films uh, from all over the world as well. Some are a little bit on the dark side, I must say, but epic all at the same. Not only that, but we have exclusive access to behind the scenes with a Q&A with the filmmakers involved. You can shout about the event and let us know exactly which films that you are feeling tonight and loving through our socials at Shorts on Tap. So get comfy, sit tight, kick back and relax. Let's get into our freshly squeezed selection of comedy shorts. Okay, so I now have the absolute pleasure of being joined by James Longley and Paul Longley, who make up the Adventure Brothers. How are we doing, guys? Good. How are you? All right? Yeah. Yeah, not too bad. This is um, obviously, well, this is life for the last year, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, just sat, sat at this computer, just looking down the zoom lens all the time. <laughs> so um, talk to me about the creation of the Adventure Brothers. So, you know, this is a this is a question we get asked and it's sort of like it's it's almost like trying to explain how did that dream happen? Because it's just sort of like uh, there is no there is no like stream of consciousness that created Adventure Brothers because, well, there can't be. It was absolutely absurd. I mean, it's basically like me and, I mean, me and James have always had a very similar sense of humour and we're like very close as brothers and stuff. Um, I did a degree in at university in comedy writing and sort of have a career as a comedy writer and actor and stuff. And film a lot of my own things but normally what happens is, is that James films I write and I act it with my friends and stuff but we've always had a very similar sense of humour and then obviously when lockdown hit uh situations change we've always wanted to work together but we're like ships in the night James works certain days I work certain days we never we're never in the same room so together. lockdown actually brought you together on a it project did. yeah it did yeah. I mean we we our bedrooms are genuinely about two meters apart but um <laughs> <laughs> lockdown yeah, what brought us together yeah um, last few years <laughs> it's been like you know we want to work together but like I work in TV, so a lot of the time I'm either away on location and like foreign country, I come back for a couple of days and have to go and do something else. So, you know, we're kind of like, oh, we'll, we'll get around to that. And then actually lockdown gave us the opportunity to actually like, you know, sit down. And it, was always, it was always a thing of what we're going to do, like as in. And so it, 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 it happened quite naturally because we just started just filming some small, silly sketches just for our own entertainment. Uh, and that sort of went well. And we were basically just looking to... Um, entertain people make people laugh just during lockdown and stuff like friends and family and we just sort of got braver and braver really and then I think just one night just just slightly giddy just sort of reverting back to sort of being almost like sort of seven-year-old versions of ourselves was sort of like oh wouldn't it be funny if this happened and then this <laughs> happened and then this happened and then, and then before we know it, we've written it and then we found ourselves making it and I don't think it was until we put it out there for people to see that we realized what, what is this sorry and then uh, <laughs> and then had this sort of like our window of where we both sort of looked at each other like have we gone mad and yeah then, you yeah. kind of started at innocent seven-year-old and then mm. you kind of graduated to doodling teenager yeah yeah the, the very short space of a couple of minutes mm. um yeah. have you guys ever seen uh, it did kind of remind me a little bit of american vandal no i've i've, I've no. heard about it. some people said this to me since and i was like oh what's it about and i'm like oh it's about drawing cocks like, oh right i can see where you've got the link yeah. um, basically yeah. yeah yeah but um this one yeah it started off i i was being lulled into a full sense of security and then the cocks came out and uh yeah it just it mm. just went wild i i do have a question though how come there weren't any vaginas yeah i mean i i, I don't know i don't know but i think it's because 
because as boys we never drew vaginas i think that'd be too rude uh, <laughs> oh too rude yeah, yeah that would be cross i think that'd be crossing a line that would that'd be ungentlemanly of us as as as, as boys to drawn vaginas <laughs> <laughs> that's too sexy yeah. <laughs> Did, um, um yeah so what is what happens now with this is this like a standalone thing or does adventure brothers like do they get out more so i mean again they, they really should get out more considering what they're getting up to uh but no we've um luckily it's, it's gone down really well it's, it's one of those things of where i think adventure brothers people either get it or they don't quite quickly you're a fan of it or you're not like we've had some brilliant feedback from people and we've also had film festivals Tools that almost as soon as we've clicked submit have instantly declined it as in, we're not having that that is an absolute disgrace. yeah like there's been some people who, who like we've spoken to like i mean there was one guy i worked with who wasn't a ma massive fan he was kind of like a spit crude and like all cocks and oh. stuff and then the, the exact same day he drew a copy in someone's notebook at work that's, <laughs> kind, of like, that's kind of what the film's kind of like you know <laughs> yeah. but then uh, off off the back of that we've um we've developed the idea into a series just because we just enjoyed the main thing we enjoyed about it is that we enjoyed making it together like as in we enjoyed doing the drawings we enjoy animating them we enjoy they having no sort of boundaries almost with but having boundaries at the same time you know it's, it's always just us uh with like the addition of family and stuff you sort of self-contained but then you can take it into a new world so we've developed into a series we did it we did a christmas special adventure brothers save christmas um which is very much the same sort of theme. Um, and uh, the idea now is, is basically is in, um, uh, they've been left uh, in old drawings from when they were children uh, by their grandfather who, and he leaves them a note saying, I'd like you to sort of turn your drawings from children uh, into stories and they arrive. And, it's, and the, the letter carries on saying as, and the granddad has written in a letter like, um, uh, look out for me in your stories. I'll appear as a grandfather clock, but his handwriting is really bad. So he appears as a giant cock and bollocks. Uh, so the whole story, we're, we're accompanied on this journey. Uh, so the, the third lead in our in the Adventure of series is um, our reincarnated granddad as a big cock and bollocks. Um, so it's, it's heartfelt, but at the same so time, absolutely appalling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have to say a personal highlight has to be where you innocently tried to turn the cock into something else that was not, yeah, um, yeah. yeah just not a cock. And uh, it reminded me, I actually have some notes and someone in my class had drawn a uh, penis on my notes. And so I turned it into a horse, which I thought was, yeah. That, that is very adventure of us. That, uh, that will probably nick that. That's it. <laughs> I'll, I'll send it to you. I'll yeah, send it to you. Yeah, not a cock horse. Yeah. <laughs> well guys thank you so much for joining us and being a part of shorts on tap um what is 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 uh, adventure brothers like the next thing that's for you or what do you have coming up that you'd you'd like to share with us yeah so as, as we're saying there um we're we've, we've eventually we've developed adventure brothers into a series so we're we've we've put it with we developed the format we've got adventure brothers save christmas uh which has just been out now um and we're working on the next episode now um so look out for that it's 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 the same but different um uh, it was a non-running thing, so yeah, look out for those. We've also got some. If 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 uh, if animated cocks aren't your thing, we've also got a, a mockumentary series called At Home with. Is at home with Nick Nullins, which is a about a referee stuck in lockdown, and there's At Home with Atlee Tim Twenty. That's about a thespian actor who is making it as a YouTuber. So there's um, a bit different, bit of a different style there. Yeah, so we're just working on them simultaneously at the moment, really. Yeah, guys, thank you so much. Um, is there a, a social media platform that you'd like us to uh, head to? Probably, probably just our own. Um, so at Paul underscore Longley and what's yours, James? Uh, mine's at James R. Longley. Nice one. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you so much. I look forward to the next adventures with you. Um, yeah, stay safe. Lovely. Cheers. Thanks very much, thank guys. Very much. Thank you. Thank Cheers. you. Bye. Hey Jess. Eduardo Briganti, welcome, welcome to Shorts on Tap, our first ever virtual event. How are you doing? Yeah, really good. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm um, I'm really excited, and uh, I've been following Shorts on Tap uh, for for like years now. So it's it's kind of it's those kind of um, festivals or events, you know, and then you you have to join you have to attend um um when you are like um approaching like filmmaking in in the uk and london especially so yeah i'm really excited 
It's a great space to be in. And obviously, like I mentioned, this is our first virtual event. We've had to adapt. But um, usually it would be in person and we'd have the screening and then we'd have the Q&A in person and we'd have uh, the people who are watching, who are engaging in front of us. Um, But actually, because I know that you are in Italy, this has actually been possible because of uh, technology and stuff. So at least we have that to thank for. Otherwise, uh, you might not have been able to make this event. Yeah, exactly. That's that, that's great from from the, that point of view. But uh, I've been to to the events in uh, in Brick Lane, so I know um, what's the atmosphere there, and I know like it's really great for networking and uh, you know even just having um, a chat with other filmmakers. I think is that's very inspiring, and I can really inspire others. Um, so yeah, from that point of view, is is a bit of a shame, but yeah, Absolutely. thanks to technology, I can join. I do think there is something in uh, you, well, you hit the nail on the head. It's the atmosphere of when you're you're there live, um, being able to connect with people in person, actually look them in the eyes uh, in front of you. So I know yeah, what you totally. mean, but we're adapting, and hopefully this uh, this won't be for long. This will just be in the interim. Um, but tonight we've actually been able to watch one of your beautiful shorts, and it's within a comedy night. And what I just really really loved. Um, um, a dog's uh, dog's life and it was filmed just gorgeously and then you've got these quite comedic characters that come in as the voices where did it all begin for you yeah so basically I made this short film um, for a, a competition called the Picked, and the, unfortunately the, the short film um, I haven't been selected for that but uh, I, it's okay because I'm actually uh, I'm really grateful for what we achieved so far. So we screened the uh, Interfilm, which is Oscar Qualifying Film Festival in Berlin. And we screened uh, It's Me as well, which is another Oscar Qualifying Film Festival. And uh, it's all great. And, uh, and so we basically, I made it with Marcus, who's the DOP um, back in, uh, it was, I think, end of May. So it was like, right in the middle of the pandemic, the first lockdown in London. So we just decided to go out there and, uh, and, uh, and shoot, just film animals really. And started with my cat, um, <laughs> because I noticed it was uh, like looking um, out of the window. What's um, your cat's name? Errol is actually my housemate's cat, <laughs> but she was like away um, all the time. So I think he was like, waiting for her uh, all day long so that was my like the starting point of of this entire like mad trip um, with these amazing animals as protagonists Um, so yeah so we 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 went to Hackney uh, marshes and uh, we found this amazing dog and uh, and I spoke to the owners I said like I love your dog I think (laughs) I want him and uh, to start in this short film and uh, and um, well, of course the, the crowds were there in, in Acne Marshes. It was like pretty local. So I show, we, we shot the the cat and the, and the goldfish. That's my goldfish, that's, that's called Hugo. Um, Hugo, I love yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, the cat and the goldfish at home and, and uh, the, the dog and the crowds in, in Acne Marshes. So, that was very local and involved just me and this friend of mine. So um, really, really straightforward actually. And, and you know, after making that, and we had like so much fun and <clears throat> the actors, the, the, the voiceovers, they, they are like uh, three out of four are friends of mine and they were super excited. We had so much fun making that. And, uh, and, and the crowd, the, the voice for the crowd is like a proper actor and he jumped on board for like for, for nothing because he loved the project. And I really enjoyed the atmosphere of just this bunch of people try to make something and try to have fun. And we had actually a lot of fun. And uh, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna share the backstage at some point because I'm plenty of videos and, and photos of the backstage. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we had so much fun and, and I think um, everyone should make like a short film just like we did, just just for 
for the sake of of having fun and make something. Um, yeah, I really enjoy the process. I think it's the first time I make a short film, and I love the process. Yeah. <laughs> it can be quite frustrating. <clears throat> it can be quite with, challenging. Working with animals is always a lot of fun, isn't it? <laughs> totally, they're like children. Um, they're like um, completely aware and unaware of the camera. So they they don't care. Like after a couple of seconds, they 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 just don't care anymore. And you can do whatever whatever you you want. And and they're just so natural. And <laughs> <laughs> they look so natural. So yeah, it's it's a pleasure working with animals. Really, I feel like next time I've done a lot of dog watching in the park. So next time I'm going to come with my camera and be like, I'm making a short film. Let me hang out with your dog. Just, just go for it. And uh, we were lucky enough that this dog actually has an um, uh, Instagram profile. It's called just Patrick underscore the dog. Amazing. And, uh, yeah, he's a star. He has m- more followers than I have. Um, <laughs> so. That happens these days. Yeah, it does. My friend's just got a, a lovely little dog and it's, it's yeah, it's climbing up them followers very well. <laughs> People love watching dogs, don't they? Totally, totally. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it, trust me, it was amazing. And, and I think besides of being selected um, in, in film festivals, I think um, the best rewards came from people who, because it initially was like available on Vimeo and uh, um, the Vimeo curators commented on the video and, and liked the video. And, um, and and just random people started writing me saying how much they enjoyed it and how much uh, the, the short made their day, they made their laugh, you know, in, in that crazy time, still crazy now, but uh, the first lockdown was like completely unexpected. And uh, I had people writing me saying like, my daughter loves it. And, uh, and I think that, that's it, really. You don't. You don't need anything else. That that's what what you want to hear as a filmmaker, as a human being. You know. Definitely. And uh, what was the decision to film it in square? And um, what did you film it on? Was it was it a filter? What kind of camera was it? No, that that that's actually Super Eight. So it's proper film. Mm. And um, film is quite expensive nowadays. But I was lucky enough. It's like that there's a lot of luck involved in this <laughs> short film, I think. I was lucky enough because I found the film stock on Free Cycle. So That's usually fun, you find too. sofas, very old sofas on Free Cycle, and I found like film stock. That's a good um, tip. Yeah, it's, it's great. I think I, I hit the jack, jackpot at that time. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that's proper Kodak Super 8 film. That's why it has like that particular kind of look and it's very grainy, especially like a few shots are very grainy. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was expired film stock, so pure celluloid. So that's why it's- Yeah, it looks amazing. It looks incredible. Um, so obviously, thank you so much for joining us on our virtual event. Uh, I'd like to know what, thank you you. Up, what people can look forward to. Um, I'm writing actually a new short film, my next short film, since I have, I've explored with Dog's Life uh, humanity in animals, I'm, I'm exploring with my next short film um, bestiality in, uh, in humans, so it's wow. actually the other way around. And, I think it takes everything to a next and, and probably more exciting level um of of the human exploration so exploring with animals, the animals metaphors yeah okay. so we'll, we'll see well we will stay tuned for that and hopefully yeah. hopefully next time it will be in the flesh eduardo briganti thank you so much for sharing your short film thank you, um, sure it's hurt so a smile on lots of people's faces um yeah thank you and we'll see you at the next shorts on tap
Okay, welcome back. Shorts on tap and we have just watched The Last Scott and I now have the pleasure of being joined by Julian Cornwall who uh, directed the film. How are we doing? Yeah, not too bad. Thank you so much. Uh, lovely, lovely to meet you, well, via online, unfortunately not in person, but uh, oh. very happy to be here. Honestly, the nature of the past year, I feel like everyone knows this feeling very, very well. Yeah. Um, how have you been coping? Uh, well, I guess it started sort of pretty well. Christmas was quite nice, a sort of decent break, but I never thought that coming back into 2021, we'd start back in lockdown, but things are a bit better than they were before. I mean, we're sort of used to the procedure, the drill, and you just find yourself talking to a lot more people, keeping busy. I write a lot, so I've sort of not really changed. It's been the same setup for me for the last year. I feel like as creatives, obviously a lot of things have been curbed, but then also we do have it down, the kind of managing your own time within yeah. your own space. So at least at least we've got that. Um, so. so tell me a little bit about your shorts and if, uh, is The Lost Scott, is it like your other films or your other work? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I mean, The Lost Scott was primarily my graduation piece where, when I graduated from London Film School. Uh, it's the first dark comedy short I did. Uh, the other short I did uh, back in 2016, that was a sort of interrogation film. That was fresh out of university. I had no idea what I was doing, uh, but I decided to get four actors, place them in a room and just see how that unfolded, which was great. Um, this is very different. I saw, I, I loved Martin McDonoghue, his films in Bruges, Seven Psychopaths. So I thought, could I do something quirky? a bit dark on the side. And um, I was very fortunate enough to basically call and call the favors I could and ask a friend who owned a hunting lodge uh, in Scotland and basically say, can I shoot this little hunting film uh, there for you? I was going to say uh, the scenery is just completely it's so epic I was when whenever I watch these shorts obviously we get like we get a huge variety and this was just cinematically like beautiful as well um, and then paired with this dark storyline uh, yeah. tell me how it first came about uh well I love I love that sort of reference because that is something that's quite big for me I wanted it to create the contrast between the beauty of the moorlands such a beautiful environment and then just these characters that really hate <laughs> that they are just aren't enjoying anything it's that sort of typical British humor um, the French, uh, my cinematographer's French. I'm actually currently staying in his flat because he's stuck in France in lockdown. He's very angry with me because I'm using his wine decanter for water <laughs> but, uh, as a water jug. So I'm keeping him posted with that. Um, but the idea for the film came about two years ago. I was, uh, I got invited actually to where the location is for a shooting, um, for a shooting trip. I'd never shot before in my life. I'm a sort of city posh boy. I thought, <laughs> okay, I love the outdoors. I'll come up. Um, and then when they sort of gave me the gun and we went to shoot some grouse, they gave me the sort of, you know, half an hour safety procedures. Uh-oh, what happened? Very informative. <laughs> it, you know, and I is said- this more this, of a documentary or- <laughs> Yeah, I was like, this is very intense, but you know, you just point, you shoot, and then you had to respect all the rules. And so the first shot came up, all the birds flew out, I pulled the trigger, nothing happened. So then a second bird came, flew really low, I missed, but I turned around, flew overhead. So I sort of turned, didn't see, and I just shot. and I caught the bird but right behind the bird there was this gamekeeper stood almost exactly where it was and miraculously nothing hit him no shell nothing of the sort I got my gun confiscated a bollocking for life pretty much sent back down to London um but it inspired me to write this film which looks at the idea of what happens if you did accidentally shoot someone um that is so yeah. that is funny a very um, close call what was the decision making in having him turn up alive because that that was a twist. <laughs> yeah, I guess that was a, my sort of trying to get my inner Tarantino going. I thought, okay, how can I put this sort of final screw in the film, keep people guessing? And I kind of like the idea that um, he was shot at a distance. And because with some shotguns, you sort of have shells that are cartridges in this, but very mini pellets. Like it obviously did a lot of damage, knocked him unconscious. And the twist was at the end, we, we think he's dead and he comes back. And it sort of creates that tension between the characters. And I also wanted to create that sort of northern southern divide where he probably has inner frustration that he's hosting these <laughs> posh southerners coming up and this is how they've reacted. How they've treated him. Yeah, awful, awful human beings. 
And <laughs> another one. So um, you've got a mention with the famous grouse in there. Is that, yeah. did you did you get sent any free uh, whiskey through that or was it? Oh, um... I wish I really should have. <laughs> uh, no, I need to do more of a shout out via my platforms for it. Someone else has brought that up and I went, you know what? No, I, I, I read the copyright laws and branding and they said they're fine to use it. So I sort of gave a shout out. It was sort of comedy value as well between my um between the two characters. Uh, no, I do need to. Uh, get, I need to ask for them for a bottle. I was going to say, you need to follow up on that. You need to I know, like, I've, 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 written, I've written a feature adaptation of the short and uh, yeah, I need to get them to make more of a, an impact on them. So yeah, that's a good good idea. I'll remember that. Exactly. You can have that one for free. Um, I want to know as well. So uh, did you mention that this was a project, was this a, a while ago that you got to do this or was it more recently? Yeah, so I mean, the fil- I shot the film in January 2019 uh, at the worst possible time with five hours of daylight in the middle of nowhere in Scotland and it absolutely freezing. Uh, that, was a, that was the only month I had time to film for four days, five days in that, in that hunting lodge. Um, so yeah, it was a completely arduous experience, but amazing when you have 20 people crammed in a lodge with a shining experience everyone going slightly mad and the weather just changing left right and center uh you all sort of come together and there's a real camaraderie um so since then i've basically been writing a feature adaptation i've filmed another sh- several shorts but in a more producing capacity and i've sort of uh, been starting a company with two friends doing lots of music videos so, so not busy at all yeah, it comes on and off. Last year was such a, you know, on and off period that you had really dead months and then suddenly boom periods. Uh, that's just the nature of lockdown, I guess. So um, as someone who seems to have been sort of thriving or getting the balance right in lockdown, what kind of advice would you give to people who are watching, perhaps they're filmmakers, maybe they're maybe finding it quite tough? Uh, yeah, I mean, one of the key advices someone has said as a filmmaker, what you know, would you advise if things get tough? I, I always say, get in a relationship with someone who's not in filmmaking. It, it, <laughs> just, it's, it just opens up your eyes and perspective so much more. My girlfriend is actually incredible and she works in, she works in business psychometrics, but just to see that she has a sort of more usual timetable during the day, it allows me to just chat about everything and anything. Um, I think, what, what's the best thing? I think just try to give yourself a break, especially in the filmmaking creative world. It can be really difficult. You have really low moments, really high moments when things are going well. Um, so I think you just have to take advantage of that when you're not busy, just try to not give yourself a hard time. You know, read, water some plants, go go out <laughs> running, other things like that, things that you can take care of yourself with. Yeah, mine is an obsession with scented candles. So that's, oh, yeah. that's my balance. I love it. <laughs> Christmas was great. People really got into sending me those. So it was good. All right. So it's 10 candles all over the place. Yeah. yeah, but be careful, obviously. Don't leave them burning too long. <laughs> Julian, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for your short. We've uh, we've really enjoyed it. I watched it twice, actually. So oh, uh, in a row. Um, can you tell us what is coming next and maybe where we can find you? Uh, so, uh, coming Not next. in your flat. <laughs> oh yeah, no, well, this isn't even my flat. I mean, I'm going to, I'm actually moving to Chiswick, getting a bit more space now. Um, nice. uh, what's coming next? I guess I'm, uh, potentially flying out to Bermuda in March for another short film, which I'm very excited for. I'm going to be working with. Fingers um, crossed on the flights. Yes, exactly. I'm hoping lockdown will be lifted and things will go according to plan. Um, and then in the future, I'm hoping that this, this feature version of The Lost Scott is going to get signed up. It's in talks with several producers in America right now. So we'll see what happens. Nice one. Well, best of luck with that. And thank you so much, Junior, Julian you Cornwall, so for joining us. It's been a pleasure, Jess. Lovely chatting with you all. Thank you. Welcome along, Gigi Bergdorf, who has directed this hilarious short film. I just, um, yeah, I just love it. Same time next week. And it's a bit weird because now I feel like we're kind of in it, maybe. (laughs) Especially (laughs) since you were in it. You starred in it as well. Yeah, maybe this is the sequel. (laughs) <laughs> uh-oh uh-oh who's who's hitting the next button I don't want to <laughs> don't want to risk doing a click have you seen click the film I haven't oh it's an Adam Sandler film it's very old but it is it get it's got the same sort of idea that he's got a remote for time travel instead oh, this okay. is like a modern day version but obviously <laughs> it's got a much happier ending um <laughs> 
but I, I know that this was done for the 48 hour film project. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, well, I guess um, I had always wanted to make a film and just kind of, I was never getting around to it. So I decided to sign up for the 48 hour film challenge. And I had that bright idea before the pandemic hit. Um, and the idea with that is they give you a genre, a character name, a prop and a line of dialogue. And then you have 48 hours to make a film. So because the pandemic was happening, I was like, I don't, I don't know how they, <laughs> I knew I would I would have to do something either over Zoom or a single character type of film. And I thought, well, I'll just see. I didn't really have a team together. I just thought I'll see what I get assigned and see whether it's possible. And um, and then they assigned time travel. And I was like, I, that's impossible. Um, but I was talking to my partner about it. And I said, you know, what? How, how can I possibly make a time travel film over Zoom? And he proceeded to come up with a story pretty much on the spot. And so then I had to get <laughs> get people to do it, um, which actually turns out it's easy in the middle of a pandemic when nobody's <laughs> going out <laughs> and they don't have to travel. They can just, you know, dial into the Zoom call. So that's, that's pretty much like, how what it you came doing, about. What are you doing Thursday evening? Uh, oh, I don't know. Like we can jump on Zoom, classic. It was literally like, what are you doing tomorrow morning? And nobody had any plans. <laughs> That is so, so it worked out nicely yeah 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 and um so did they give you a prop as well did I hear you mention that was a thing yeah so um we were they, it said a stamp and it was unclear whether that meant a postage stamp or like a some sort of so there's a moment in the film where I flash <laughs> I flash a letter and I say I've got my marching papers and I flash a letter with the stamp on it <laughs> I did notice that I was like oh yeah but it doesn't you don't think of anything that's you've done that so well you've managed to worm that way into a virtual world with stamps which are obviously physical so um yeah hats off to you on that what well, was especially weird as well because it was although we're um we all happen to be based based in the UK it's all Americans and so there was the issue of like does anybody have an American stamp or is it gonna <laughs> is it gonna register that it's you know is anybody going to care so it was the British stamp but <laughs> it's okay it's true though you're all Americans in Britain so there we go it's a yeah it's a real life thing it happens yeah. um I just uh it was so funny uh Tom on mute at the beginning or it's just like a feeling that everyone I feel has had over the past year um how has the past year been for you well it's been it's actually been all right for me um Partially, I think, because of the, this film, we actually made it in June, and it's kind of, it's given me something to be excited about and something to talk about in a year where there's very little going on. Um, and also, it turns out I'm more of an introvert than I realized, so I think the, the lockdowns haven't been as hard on me as they've been on other people. And I guess also I've been quite fortunate in that um, I was doing some filming in New York so I feel like I've traveled because I, you know, I was over there and I was back in the UK. And so I've actually been to yeah, the US twice this year. So it's just, uh, I've somehow avoided the worst of it. Yeah, you've done um, all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but obviously it's, you know, a, a terrible year for everyone in terms of, you know, having to watch everybody get sick. And now with the London numbers going up and up, that's, it's especially, um, disturbing and saddening and all of that. Um, but it's been also really heartening because I've been, because of this film, I've been to a lot of online film festivals and to see just how many people have been creative during this time and made amazing things in a way you think, how have they done that at a time when we can't really even leave our homes and yet people are making cool stuff. So I, I'm, I'm inspired by that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Some of the new things that have come out, including whether it's film or uh, art or music, I definitely have seen a new wave of stuff come from it. And it is, like you said, really inspiring. I know you mentioned that you said that this was maybe a first film that you'd made. This is your first one. Yeah, yeah. I've... um. I've always sort of thought, like, I guess as an actor, you hear all the time, like, you should make your own films, you should... And I've never wanted to just do it for the sake of doing it. Mm -hmm. So I felt like the that's why the 48 hour film festival gave me the kind of 
a structure and a reason to do it and also a deadline to complete it. Um, but on top of that, I think I'm, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. And so even if I think of an idea or I have a sort of script or it's, it just seems like, well, until I can, you know, put together the best team on earth and, you know, get the best DOP and get, you know, get the best people involved, then it's not worth doing, or unless my script is amazing. And I think this, kind of made me let go of all that and it was just like well we want to let's do something <laughs> we can't do much so let's just you know work with what we have which I found really um in a lot of ways freeing and also I found I, my plan was not to write it it was going to be all improvised um and then improvising over zoom <laughs> is a challenge because the audio cuts out if two people talk at once. So you need at least a structure where you know who's talking next. So I basically had to script it. Um, although there are some still some improvised moments in it, it's largely scripted. And I found that I really enjoyed that process of writing it. And then in shooting it, I really enjoyed the process of directing. Um, so yeah, it turns out it's, it's, uh, it's great fun. <laughs> this is the thing once. So if you are, like you mentioned, a perfectionist and you think, oh, I couldn't possibly start this without all the perfect things in place. The fact that you were given parameters that you had to work within. So you just kind of had to deal with it because there was no other option. And then when you found hurdles, you overcame them. So yeah, I'm pleased that we get to start this journey with you almost. Does that mean that you've got new ideas in the pipelines? Yeah, well, it's it's been interesting because I've always felt like I... I, you know, I don't necessarily have a story idea or I, what I found through this process is I'm much better at the kind of the dialogue than the overall story arc. So I think if this was just, um, if this story had come from my brain, it, you know, I might've got to the point of time travel, but it wouldn't have really gone and it wouldn't have resolved. It would have just sort of been a, a moment in time. And so I think I realized from that, that I'm better working with somebody. So um, John Garrity, who uh, my partner who came up with the story for this, we've been talking about ideas since then, because he's really good on the story side, whereas I'm good on the dialogue side. Mm -hmm. And then also I have a couple of other writer friends who um, we're talking about collaborating. So yeah, so I, there, there are things, I. I guess I would say they're in the pipeline. They're not, yeah. there's nothing sort of definite or pinned down. And I do feel like I'm hopeful that by the time we um, come to produce it, hopefully later this year or, or next year, that the world is much more back to normal and we can go out and <laughs> film things and have a crew and have a, you know, so do it in a more traditional way. Definitely. Well, thank you so much, Gigi, for uh, joining us for this evening yeah. and telling us about your your short film journey. It's short, but we're excited for the future for you. Um, where can we find you on socials? Where where can people follow up? So um, I'm on Instagram and Twitter. I think pretty much everywhere. My handle is just my name. So Gigi Bergdorf and I'm the only one. So you can't really <laughs> you can't really get too confused so yeah that's probably um those are the best places to to find out what the the latest news is amazing thank you so much Gigi hopefully we'll see you soon in the flesh. yeah thank you thank thanks for having me Okay then, I now have the absolute pleasure of Ben Marshall joining me, who's directed that lovely short, Stockholm Syndrome. How are we doing, Ben? Yeah, good. Thanks for having me along. I love um, the setting that we've got. You've got like a sort of uh, wooden background. It looks like you're <laughs> in a cabin. And so I'm feeling like the Stockholm Syndrome kind of uh, vibe from it. I'm sure it's not. It looks very nice and clean. but um... it's, a, it's, a, it's a glorified shed. Uh, <laughs> my mates like to call it my shed. Yeah, we've got um, a garden studio here, which has become my uh, <clears throat> place to hang out during lockdown, basically, to hide away. Yeah, well, yeah, it's looking quite good, actually. I'm very impressed. Um, I'm just in a certain corner of my bedroom. I've just kind of <laughs> shifted things so it doesn't look like I'm in the same space that I've been in since, I don't know, a year ago. Um, but yeah, yeah so I've got the camera strategically placed. If I pan it too much this way, you see the, <laughs> the mounds of crap I've tried to hide in the corner over there. Yeah, they can't see that part. So we're yeah, just going to yeah, no, stuff no, no, it over no, that no, way no, instead. No, no, no. Um, yeah, and so obviously, speaking of which, Stockholm Syndrome and this short particularly is uh, based around lockdown. Um, when was it filmed exactly? Was it so it was in 
the first lockdown, I'm guessing? What we are now, it's a bit of a trilogy, isn't it? We're on lockdown three. So it was in uh, lockdown one. Mm. Um, I think it was filmed, it was only a few weeks into it. So I think about two or three weeks into the first lockdown, uh, me and my girlfriend Molly filmed it over a period of a couple of days and then cut it together in about a week and then and put it online. Does Molly star in it? Is she the star or is she behind oh so she's um on front yeah, yeah nice I, I unfortunately dragged my girlfriend who's never acted before and I was like <laughs> please <laughs> I'm going crazy we've got to make something and uh I shoved her in front of the camera okay and so you work in filming and she references cameras is this based on some sort of true story <laughs> <laughs> yeah could well, you be worried <laughs> Uh, a lot of it uh, does stem from the frustrations of uh, living with someone that works in film and TV, having crap all over the house <laughs> all the time, all the kit taking up all the space. Uh, and then uh, the uh, the sideline story of uh, being obsessed with tech decks did <laughs> largely come from the fact that... Uh, a lot of my friends during lockdown started sending each other little presents and tech decks were one of them and uh, it was just a bit of an ongoing joke that while our girlfriends were often doing very tough jobs working from home all of us idiots were here sitting learning how to do tray flips <laughs> on our tech decks all day because uh, freelancers had nothing else to do with their time. That is amazing. And I've just realized I asked a really dumb question because obviously it was in the first lockdown. So obviously you, you had to work with, right, you're getting in front of the camera no matter what, because we're doing this. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, she she's very convincing. She was great in it. I love it. Um, and clearly so, because I hear you've won a bunch of awards for this, this short. Well, it, shockingly, it got into a couple of festivals. Uh, so we just made it for a laugh. And then I just thought I was going to put it online mainly to entertain my mates, having me get the piss ripped out of me for three minutes on screen, I thought <laughs> would be funny. And then, um, you know, once we'd wrapped it up, we thought, why don't we have a little look around and see um, what it's applicable for. And so we sent it off to the International Lockdown Film Festival, which was a bunch of guys have put together a film festival with short films all over the world and I think there was something in the region of about a couple of thousand people entered it and we won that which was ridiculous oh thank you um Big round of applause I'm sure everyone but, at home clapping too <laughs> but it was just shocking more than anything because it was we just had this silly idea we cut it together and then put it out into the world and then I think it was off the back of that that really spurred us on to have a little look around and um, see what other festivals might want us and take it on board and you know and then the shock continued that it got into uh, festivals like Bolton Film Festival uh, into I'm now trying to draw from memory <laughs> um, uh, like a bunch of other really cool BAFTA and BIFA accredited film festivals and picked up a couple of other awards so it's just been like I'm super thankful for the reception that it's had over the past like whatever it's been eight nine months. Well, it's just, um, I guess it's the almost relatability of it, uh, obviously taking it a little bit further with the the dark humour. Um, but yeah, I've, I've actually copied one of the comments that was on it and it says um, from a guy called Aram, he's like really nice work, worryingly relatable for many freelance <laughs> partners as well. So yeah, um, huge congratulations on that. Is this the kind of, I guess, well, you've had to adapt to lockdown. But um, is it kind of similar to the material you usually make? What's what's the... You know what, it's been a bit of a jumping board. So um, I, yeah, I've been super thankful for the reception that it's had because it's been something that I've been wanting to get into, which is more narrative based work for a while. Because I, I do work as a freelance director, but uh, I predominantly make um, commercial work or branded work for online and you know, it's, it's hard to make that next step and convince people to get behind you to, to, to work on narrative projects or, or do more narrative based films. And so it was really nice to take a step back and, you know, be forced to have the opportunity to be at home without any other work going on. So, uh, to, you know, to have the time and the energy to put into something and now trying, fingers crossed, to take the next step to make another longer form short this year. I've managed to convince a couple of people to gather <laughs> together as a team. And uh, we're now, you know, gunning to, as soon as this lockdown three is over and things are a little bit easier, we're hoping to get a short shot some point in spring, summer. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, can you tell us, do you have any plans in the work for that? Can you tell us anything about it? I, I do have some plans in the work. Uh, I'm trying to think how to best describe it. <laughs> I'm keeping my cards kind of close to my chest, but I, all what I can say, it's in a similar vein. It's dark comedy, uh, but some of the scenarios that were kind of more imagined in this film, I'm hoping that we can um, bring to life in a more darkly comedic violent way in the next okay year. yeah I like it you've wet our appetite so uh, we'll be looking out for that definitely excited and hopefully it will all be able to come to come to fruition uh, I'm just hoping that like all these the vaccines come at us nice and quick stick it um, in my veins <laughs> yes get it in me um well <laughs> anyway moving on um so thank you so much for joining us uh where can we find you on your socials perhaps a website uh, so I'm on Instagram as Ben Marshall Film. Also, my website is Ben Marshall Film. And so easy to remember. Um, that's where you can hunt me down. Ben, thank you so much for joining us on Shorts on Tap. Um, hopefully we'll see you in the flesh soon. Hopefully. Oh, thanks very much for having me along. So that is just about it from us today. Thank you so much for joining us. And of course, a huge love to all the filmmakers who joined us today and anyone who contributed to making this great content for us to share. At Shorts on Tap is where to go to find us on the socials. Shortsontap.com is also where to find us on the website and you can see all further events on there as well. I'll see you next time. Have a good one. <laughs>